Clutch Trucker is filmed before a live studio audience. Hey YouTube, Clutch Trucker here. Uh, thanks again for tuning in to another edition of the Clutch Trucker channel. Now with fluoride. Uh, this is going to be kind of a quick video today. I know sometimes I say that and they're not all that quick. This really will be quick. Uh, it's all about um, one way as an owner operator how sometimes you can uh, cash in, make a little extra money when you weren't quite expecting it. Now I delivered a load this morning to uh, U.S. Foods in Hurricane West Virginia and I uh, thought it was going to be <laughs> easy to get there. I got at the Hurricane Virginia, or West Virginia, I'm sorry, exit uh, 15 minutes before my delivery time because I was only a mile away. Well, I didn't get there till 45 minutes later thanks to this being down in, it's in the south, this area was obviously built before there were zoning laws, and there was only one way to get into this uh, U.S. Foods, which is drive like, you know, up to 10 miles out of the way, and follow their tiny little signs, which you can't read when it's dark, which it was early this morning. So I have some video of what it looked like coming back out of this place, down this tiny little road. This is the main road into the U.S. Foods. Uh, it doesn't look as bad on the video as it really is, but my gosh. You're going to put a food warehouse somewhere. You need to have better truck access than this. I just want to show this road that you have to go down to to get to the U.S. Foods Warehouse in Hurricane, West Virginia. You're in a neighborhood. And you see this road has is barely even wide enough for two cars to pass. And this isn't even the worst part of it. Uh, this is so typical of the South, where zoning laws either don't exist or didn't come into place for a long, long time. And so, uh, and then even though things have changed, we're in the two. It's 2020 for crying out loud. Upgrade your roads, especially if it's leading to a warehouse where there's big trucks coming in and out all the time. The road goes through the middle of the warehouse property, so you have to wait for cars while you're trying to back into a door there. You can see how ridiculous this road is. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it probably doesn't look as bad on the video as it really is. To drive the truck down it without falling off the pavement, you have to kind of be on top of the middle line. And so you don't drop off into the ditch that I just passed there. It's just, you know, ridiculous when things like this exist anymore. You just wonder what the hell were they thinking and okay now it's been that way for years and that's what they'll say but so improve the road that leads to it this is the only road you can use to get in and out of this place as I got off the interstate to try to get here there's a sign saying US foods little tiny signs of course it was dark as I was trying to get here trying to read these little tiny you know homemade signs from US foods to follow the route to get here you have to wind around an extra six and a half miles even though you're literally a half mile away at the exit. Okay, back to the main point of this video. I, um, like I say, delivered to U.S. Foods, Hurricane West Virginia this morning. Found uh, Go Mart near the uh, TA. And, well, they say it's Hurricane. It's actually Tees Valley. And parked there for a little while while I was waiting to get the next load. Uh, got it uh, picking up at a Walmart up in Mason, uh, West Virginia, which is right along the river uh, with Ohio. Went up there to pick it up, and it's just one pallet. One one pallet only weighs 100 pounds funny thing is walmart they wouldn't even load it for me i was this is a walmart store they said well we can't you know legally because of insurance and blah 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 the sun the moon the stars you need to put it on the trailer fine i'll push it on the trailer i pushed it on the trailer dropped it and uh, they gave me the paperwork no seal so i called uh, my dispatcher and said hey uh this load is one pallet only weighs 100 pounds and my trailer is damn near empty. What can you do? Now this load was actually paying fairly decent for what it was. 1600 bucks for, uh, you know, 850 miles or so. Not quite two bucks a mile, but close to it. And uh, so after Turquoise Trucking takes their little percentage out, still a decent paying load, especially since it doesn't weigh a damn thing. But I called and said, hey, you know, let's see if we can find something else. And um, I said, yeah, I waited a little while. But I was starting to run out of hours, so I headed down towards uh, this Flying J where I'm at tonight in Catlettsburg, West Virginia, right on the border with Virginia and, uh, or West Virginia and Kentucky. 
So sure enough, just as I'm about to get to uh, Catlettsburg uh, with the Flying J here in, in Catlettsburg, uh, Kentucky, right on the border with West Virginia, uh, Efron calls me uh, from Turquoise says, hey, I found a load, picks up in Cleveland. Well, yeah, that's kind of out of the way, but it delivers just uh, only a little bit south of where I'm delivering this other load, um, and it pays $1,200. Would I like to have that one too? Sure. Okay, granted, I gotta drive now back up north to Cleveland from where I'm at, about 270 miles out of my way to go pick this up. And then after I deliver uh, the first load, I have to drive about 180-ish miles uh, south from there to deliver this load. But here's how it works out and makes me extra money. I'm already on this load, it's already gonna take, you know, a day and a half, two days anyway, okay? Now, if I can pick up another load, uh, to go with it and just run a few extra miles, I'm gonna run about 450-ish extra miles to do both loads. But, do the math. What this means is that's only 450 extra miles and I'm getting paid $1,200 for the second load on top of the first one, which means I'm making well over $2 a mile to me after I give Turquoise their percentage for the second load. And the first load was still decent paying in the first place. So overall, I kind of clean up. It takes about the same amount of time, a few extra hours on the other end, and I make a lot more money in just a couple of days. So this is a way as an owner operator, you can kind of clean up. If you have a load that's just a partial load and they don't require a seal on it, that means it's up to you if you want to add anything else on uh, where you're going. So I was able to take advantage of that, call my dispatcher and say, hey, find me something else, and they did. So now I turned what was already a pretty decent paying load into now a really, really good paying load by combining two of them on one truck in basically the same direction, and I'm cleaning up. We're talking about 2,800 gross in two days. <laughs> That's how you make it as an owner operator, and this is what you can do. So anytime you get a load as an owner operator and they don't put a seal on it, that means you can add something else if you have room. Call your dispatcher and say, hey, what can you find for me? You might just make some extra cash, baby. It's a beautiful thing. All right, hey, this is about it for this video. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Please, as always, subscribe, uh, click the like, uh, comment. I would love to read your comments. Ring that bell. As always, sniff the magic YouTube fairy dust. Clutch out.